Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use FabFilters Pro MB or a multi-band compressor to sidechain a sub bass to the kick drum in a pre-master. So there are a ton of videos out there, for example, that show you how to do side chaining when you have a kick channel and a sub bass channel or a bass channel. And you do a little bit of clever routing. You can do it with Pro Q3, for example. I've done a video tutorial on that. But what if you get sent a pre master and it's a little bit subby in the low end and you need to clean it out to let the kick breathe in the mix? You would think it might be impossible and you might need to get sent the stems to do a little bit of mixing. But with the Pro MB, it's completely possible and easy to do. So I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So I've got the Pro MB on here on the screen and it's in full screen mode. And what I'm going to do is just add a band. Okay. So we've got a lot of control over this band. I can, you know, widen or narrow the band by clicking and dragging. I can also use the mouse wheel. Um, if I want to use it like an EQ, I can actually just click and drag down and now I have an EQ node essentially. Uh, this is obviously a compressor node as well and I have my compression controls down here at the bottom. And if you control click any of these, they'll get set back to zero. So I don't want to carve out the sub here. I only want to carve out the sub when the kick happens. So if I go ahead and play it right now, it's pretty much happening. And that's because we're on the kick sub range here. But if I want to be more precise and only carve out the subbiness when the kick happens, I need to do a little bit more using the controls down here. And I'm going to do a really extreme example just to show you how it's done. I'm not necessarily saying the mix here is bad. I'm just saying if you had a bad mix, this is how you'd clean it up. So I'm going to take the position here and let's just move it over. I'm going to take the threshold and move it down. And the range here is how much I want to carve out. So I can go pretty far and it's actually got adaptive um, space over here. So the further I bring it down, the further down it's actually going to go. So you can see I'm at negative 30 decibels here. So that in conjunction with the threshold here, like right now, I'm just essentially doing the same thing as if I had the EQ node all the way down. All right. So again, I'm just going to control click here to set things back. And the way to do this is to come over here to the expert mode and go from band. So when it's on band, it's going to use the actual band that you see here to trigger the compressor, but I'm going to go free. And when I click free, I get this little slider control over here. So what this is going to do is trigger the compressor based on the information in this frequency range from this side to this side. And if I audition that and then take this slider and move it over to just where the kick's happening, I can use the kick to trigger the compressor. So let's just go ahead and first audition it and find the kick in the frequency ranges. So that's pretty much it there. I hope you could hear that inside of the video, but it's very clear that that's kind of where the fundamental frequency peak is happening is right around there. And we can get in there and fine tune it more later, but for our purposes, it's good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off auditioning. Now let's go ahead and play with the compressor settings to remove that sub low end when the kick happens to make the kick stand out better in the mix. So extreme example, there you go. You can hear the kick much more when the compressor is on. Let's just do that again. And that's it. But obviously that's way too much. It's way too extreme. We're just completely getting rid of the sub at low end and you know, big speakers and in your car, it's not gonna sound the best. We, we want sub there. We just wanna remove it a little bit. So we can actually come up here and solo the band and see what's getting compressed. So as I move over here to the left with this side right here, we're actually getting rid of the kick part. So I don't want to remove the subbiness from the kick, just the subby subby low end. And that's what that's doing here. And not only that, but I can change the slope here to have a little bit more of a precise frequency carved out instead of this big slope here, where it's kind of still going over the kick. If you click here and drag up and down, you can go up to 48 decibels. So this is a much 
bigger, more dramatic slope. And we're cutting out a lot less of these upper frequencies here. This is unavoidable. Uh, the Pro Q3 does have a pretty much brick wall there, but the Pro MB doesn't have it yet. So you can go up to 48 and you can do that by clicking and dragging here. Or if you double click, you can actually type in the value too. So I'm going to type in 48. Boom. And you know, if we want to do it over here as well, we can. We, we don't really need to. We can actually make it a little bit more brighter because again, this is all the subby low end. If I bring this over too far, we're actually going to really cut it out here. And that's actually too much in my opinion. So you want to be careful of that. Um, you know, you know, right around 36 is probably as low as you can be able to go. Uh, if I push over too far on this one as well, it's going to push it over. So you need to be careful here. You want to get as close as you can. And that's pretty much the subby low end. So and there we go. We're really getting rid of it. So what I might do is pull up on the range. You see how much punchier the kick sounds now? And of course we want to take the attack and put it uh, you know, at 0% here, just so the kick happens really fast and then the release you know, really releases really quickly. So again, we're only carving out that subby low end when the kick is happening. And that way the bass or sub can come back in after the kick happens to really full out that low end. And if we want to get even more punchiness on the attack, we can actually take the look ahead and really crank it up. As you increase the look ahead, you are going to be getting some latency, but we're in a mastering situation. We're not doing any live recording or anything like that. So it's actually perfectly okay to do it if you want to have the best, quickest attack time you can get. So boom, there we go. We've really removed muddiness if it were actually muddy, I don't really think it is. Uh, maybe it made it a little bit better. But again, I'm just trying to show you the technique to fix a problem if you have it in your pre-master. And of course, that's how you do it. Very simple, very easy, uh, very intuitive using FabFilters Pro MB. Highly suggest checking it out. It's available now on PluginBoutique.com as always. Links in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper here. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.